Ligases join two polynucleotides into one molecule by joining the 5' phosphate to 3' hydroxyl groups. The reaction requires coupling to an energy source, either ATP or NAD+, because the reaction itself is not thermodynamically favorable. The one you will most encounter is T4-DNA ligase. This enzyme has no homology in, to anything in E. coli, and moreover its only homologs are in other phages. We'll see that there is also a native ligase in most cells, but this enzyme is quite distinct. It requires a 5' phosphate and a 3' hydroxyl, and there can be no mismatches or gaps near the junction to be ligated. It operates on any length of homology, including the joining of blunt ends. It is commonly used to join DNAs whose ends have been cleaved by restriction enzymes. Here we see the joining of two PSD1 sticky ends back into a double-stranded DNA with restoration of the restriction site. The E. coli DNA ligase is rarely used in vitro, but it is, it is a ubiquitous housekeeping function in cells used during DNA repair and replication. It forms bonds by repairing only nicks. It requires a 5' phosphate be present, and it can't be used to join non-annealed DNAs. So it can't be used to ligate together two DNAs cleaved by restriction enzymes like T4 can. It only repairs nicks. The bond being generated by ligase is the same one we discussed before with restriction enzymes. The phosphate will already be present, and it just needs to be joined to the 3' hydroxyl. So it is a nick that it is repairing. Probably all cloning methods at some stage involve the activity of a ligase, but sometimes that activity is provided in vivo. Ligation-independent cloning is a popular method of cloning DNAs into vectors. The vector is first digested with a restriction enzyme. Its ends are then chewed back due to the proofreading functionality of T4 DNA polymerase. When only a single base, T, is provided to the polymerization reaction, the polymerase will chew back to the first T, resulting in a 14 base pair overhang at the end of the DNA. An insert is similarly generated with long 14 base pair overhangs. The two DNAs are then mixed together, resulting in a circular DNA containing four NICs. Upon transformation into E. coli, these NICs are repaired and the plasmid stably replicates. TAC DNA ligase, not to be confused with TAC polymerase, is biochemically the same as the E. coli DNA ligase, but it comes from Thermus aquaticus. Because that organism is a thermophile, this protein is thermostable. It is primarily used in the ligase chain reaction, or LCR. LCR is similar to PCR in the sense that it involves exponential amplification of a DNA product through cycles of temperature changes. It is used for detection of polymorphisms in high-density assays, or some protocols of gene synthesis. LCR, like PCR, involves a template DNA and trace amounts. It, however, it involves four oligos instead of two, and it involves a thermostable ligase instead of a polymerase. The cycling of an LCR is the same as PCR. The first step is thermal denaturation, which separates the templates into two strands. The temperature is then dropped and the oligos anneal to the template. The oligos are designed to anneal directly adjacent to one another on the template, and the two sets are reverse complements of one another. The ligase joins perfectly annealed sequences, fusing two oligos into one. In the next round of LCR, these newly formed molecules denature off and can re-anneal to other oligos. Thus, there is exponential amplification of the joining of the oligos into fused molecules. The product of LCR is thus short duplexes. There is also an enzyme called T4 RNA ligase. It is a common lab error to not be aware of this enzyme and misdiscover it in a freezer, thinking it is the more popular T4 DNA ligase, but it's a very different enzyme. It joins single-stranded RNAs head to tail by joining a 5' phosphate with a 3' hydroxyl. Note that the 5' end of most RNAs generated by prokaryotic transcription will have a 5' triphosphate instead, instead, and it's thus not immediately available to participate in this reaction. This enzyme can also be used to ligate two single-stranded DNAs head to tail, but it requires a 5' phosphate on one of them. Thus, oligos are not by default able to participate in this reaction, but can be employed through the addition of a kinase. Though it is technically not classified as a ligase, Vaccinia topoisomerase is functionally similar in the context of genetic engineering. It finds common use due to the popularity of the TopoTA cloning kit. 
The reaction it performs is sequence-specific cleavage and rejoining of the sequence T or C, CCTT. It forms a stable tyrosyl 3 prime phosphate enzyme-bound intermediate, and when you buy a TA kit from Invitrogen, you are purchasing this intermediate. This intermediate can be reacted with another DNA providing a single A3' extension, such as a PCR product.